All right, so you got to ask yourself, what is holding up in this hideous environment? The stay-at-home economy, the packaged food companies. This is classic recession-proof group that's even more attractive when we're forced to eat at home. Just look at Hormel, the maker of Spam, Skippy peanut butter, Applegate organic meats, Genio turkey, and Hormel canned chili, among other brands. When the market was roaring yesterday, Hormel vaulted 14%. When we got hammered today, it was only down less than 1%. Makes sense. Spam is exactly what you'd expect people to stock up on when they're worried about being stuck in a quarantine. But is that really what's happening? Let's take a close look with Jim Snee. He's the chairman, president, and CEO of Gormel, which does such a great job to get a better sense of how his company's faring in this stay-at-home world. Mr. Snee, welcome back to Mad Money. Well, Jim, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure to be back with you. All right, so, Jim, I, uh, my wife, Lisa, was uh, at King's at the store on Saturday, like everybody else. I come back, and there is literally a mountain of Skippy, okay? And I said, why would you do that? She goes, because, well, that's what you do. And I, I tried to get a sense. All she was like circular reason. I said, but why? She goes, well, because we all know. Why do we all know that this is what you buy in a quarantine? We've never been quarantined. Well, I mean, we do know that, you know, in, in the current situation, uh, so many consumers are looking for good, high quality, shelf stable products. You know, in the case, just in case they are quarantined, they want to make sure that they've got good, high quality products that are, are going to last. And I mean, we're seeing that um, across the country. We're seeing that in, in all of our retailers and you know, it's across all of our brands, all of our business. It's Spam, it's Skippy, it's Applegate, it's Genio. Um, whether it's center of the store or refrigerated, uh, we're seeing a significant uptick across so many of our businesses. So many things are falling apart in this country right now, Jim. I think what's interesting is the importance of food supply availability. This is something that's still working. How come? Well, I'll tell you why it's working. It's really because of the incredible team of production professionals. I know in our facilities, um, they're just absolutely amazing. There is such a spirit of responsibility and just an obligation to know that, that we play a critical role in the food supply and consumers are counting on us. But I'll tell you, we're not alone, right? I mean, the food industry has stepped up as you knew it would. And so, I mean, we're really proud of our production professionals, but it's not just us. It's the entire food industry that knows the country needs us. And so they're working tirelessly to meet the demand of our customers and our consumers. There also is, uh, there's an analyst, J.P. Morgan, a good person, I, I know the person, uh, as a sell on your, your company. Uh, and they're worried about the uh, African swine fever in China and, uh, possible, and that, what they call a headwind. I mean, hasn't the tailwind of the stay-at-home economy obliterated the headwind of the African swine fever? Yeah, I, I think that was top of mind three months ago. I mean, the world has changed dramatically uh, just since our last earnings call when we were talking about that. You know, as we're thinking about how the world has changed, it is making sure that we have good quality products available for consumers. Um, you know, the other thing we know that's changed is the food service industry. Right. And so the, the dynamics in that industry has changed, and we're doing absolutely everything that we can to work with our distributor and operator partners to make sure that we're offering them innovative and creative new product solutions as they go into this new world of delivery and takeout in a way that they never have before. Now, there's another way to look at this problem, too. Uh, China, uh, how are your operations there? Yeah, actually, uh, I heard this morning from our team, and uh, there's actually a return to, to normalcy. And so our plants are fully staffed. Uh, what we're hearing just out and about is that people are, are in the communities. Our retail business is strong, and the food service business is really starting to, to bounce back. So, you know, it, there is another side to this, and obviously we've got to get through the, the eye of the storm. But we can look to China and see that, that we can and will come out of this. Well, if we can just hold on, if people can just hold on to their stock, I know I can't ask anyone not to lose money. But, OK, so I've got my black pepper spam. I've got, I didn't mean I was making a joke yesterday about the pumpkin spam. I, I, it's, it, I thought it tasted good. I was just having some fun. Uh, teriyaki spam. The millennials who are now staying at home and supposed to trying to get us sick, they love your stuff. Now, what is the affinity? Why do they like the teriyaki, uh, the black pepper? They like the, the, I guess, the different varieties. Well, they do, you know, and, and you know, we don't want to be self-serving about this. But, you know, the fact is, even before this uptick in demand, 
you know, spam was on track for its sixth consecutive record year. And so we, we've really hit our stride with that brand, even though it's an iconic 80 plus year old brand. I mean, it's connecting with today's consumer in a way that really it never had before. I mean, it's probably more relevant today than it's ever been. Well, and, and so, you know, they're using it as an ingredient. Uh, they're, they're frying it. They're, they're using it multiple different ways. And, um, you know, I think it just speaks volumes to how we've been able to build that business and keep it relevant for so many years. For 129 years strong, incredible financial strength, but also a heart. You're donating to hunger because of coronavirus, correct? Yeah, yeah, we are, Jim. And, you know, you, the first thing you touched on was our incredible financial strength. I mean, you know, we've got a rock solid balance sheet, incredible cash flows. And that's really our message to, to our team here is there's there's not a company that's better positioned to weather the storm than Hormel Foods. I mean, this is what we're made for. You know, it's 120 years, 20, 129 years of incredibly rich history. We're compassionate, we're empathetic, we're generous. And we know that in a time like this, our communities are counting on us more than ever. And so we know that we have an obligation to take care of those who take care of us. And, you know, this is the, the beginning of our ability to help during this crisis. And it's a million dollar donation to help with the food insecure. And again, we hope it's just the first step in making a big difference. Last question. Uh, I've got in my hands Hormel chili uh, with yep. beans. And it says it's the number one selling chili in America. This is a pure what we call center aisle food. We all heard that everyone had just avoided the center aisle. No one goes there anymore. Could this be an actual change of where people go in the supermarket? Well, you know, we never subscribed to that theory to begin with, Jim. I mean, we, we never bought into the story that center of the store was dead. I mean, we had a number of categories that were performing well. Uh, before this uptick. And I mean, we believe it will continue. And so when you think about Spam, you think about Skippy, you think about Hormel Chili, you think about our great authentic Mexican products. I mean, consumers were going there for our products. They were shopping the categories. Um, Obviously, this is a chance for so many of them to reconnect with them. It's not the preferred way. It's not how we, we want consumers to reconnect with them. But, you know, we know that we have a role to fill in the supply chain we take that responsibility very seriously. And in the midst of this crisis, you know, uh, what leaders do is they lead. And our entire company is taking that very seriously. Gotcha. All right, Jim Z, thank you so much uh, for being a stalwart, for being there and for having an unbelievable stock that we've loved because of your dividend policy. We didn't even get to that. That's next time. Thank you so much to Jim Snead, Chairman, President, CEO of Hormel Foods, Skippy Peanut Butter. It's the only one we eat. Yeah, money's back in. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.